Hey everybody, this is Brian, and this is not a tutorial. Um, I don't really know what to call this. I'm just going to call it a technology preview. Um, kind of going to go on some of the code, like um, I had this plugin service. I was explaining in one of my tutorials, I think it was 100, 101, yeah, it was 100, um, how we use QPlugin and we can create and load plugins. Well, one of the things I wanted to do was make this very extensible. So let me start up my little app here. And this program is very simple. I won't actually bore you with the details, but what it does is it's going to run as a Windows service and it simply loads plugins. And as you can see, it says FTP server listening, Telnet server listening, listening on port 1000. So this program's whole mission in life is to just load plugins. I wanted to really kind of uh, explore what I could and couldn't do with the Q plugins. So let's just Telnet into this thing localhost on 1000 and this is the application running in the background you can see how it says connected I'm just going to type help and there's a list of commands and you've seen this before if you watched the previous tutorial and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I want to cover some new things um, if we simply type list it'll show you the plugins that are loaded now you notice how there's an FTP plugin what I've done is I've created three plugins a launcher plugin which will just simply launch another program when the plugins loaded and then I created a telnet plugin if you're wondering what telnet is let's just find out here let's create another window here window mania all right let's just go telnet localhost 23 we could have just left out the 23 but telnet's on port 23 and then when this connects it'll say enter password now because I wrote this and I haven't set it I know that the password is literally P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. That's what Telnet does. It actually gives you a remote command line once you've entered a password here. So let's just do a CD, C drive, and voila. There you go. I have full, unfederated access to this computer's command line from across a TCP connection. That's what Telnet does. But the point is I wrote that in Qt. So let's kind of kill this let's kill that and let's kill that let's just kind of explore real quick here if you're not familiar with plugin service don't worry we'll cover it in detail later on but the um, telnet plugin is actually what I wanted to focus on a little bit you see how it uses the interface that we've discussed previously the plugin interface that's how the plugin service loads this and the guts of this thing lives in telnet plugin.cpp let's just kind of remove that remove that um, as you can see, it's not too difficult of a program. Um, it just has some very basic things like it starts a server on port 23 and et cetera, et cetera. And you've got some exec commands and that's how you set the password and the port so you could actually set this. And what it'll do is it'll actually encrypt it or make a cryptographic hash. So when we store the password, we're not storing it in plain text. And I'll cover that in a little bit more detail later on. And then here's the TCP server and all we're doing here is we're just saying okay create a queue process and you know when something happens fire it off actually I think I got the wrong one here ah there it is TCP client sorry about that my bad so when the client socket connects we're just creating a new queue process and then we do a little bit of magic in the background like we set a banner where we ask for the password and um, we make sure they're authenticated um, things like that and then, oh yes, if we're going to change directory, um, I had a really hard time with that piping that to Q process for some reason. So I just manually overwrote it and said if the command buffer is CD, then we're going to actually kill the process, restart it with a new working directory. See the set working directory neuter? That's how you do the CD command. So then I thought, well, that's nice and all, but I want to really challenge not only myself, but cute. I want to see what this thing can do. And one of my personal hobbies is writing um, fully functional TCP client server. So I wrote, you guessed it, an FTP server. Now, before we begin, I'm just going to say that, let me show this. This comes as is with no expressed warranty of any kind. Um, I'm going to release this out of my website, full source code. This does follow RFCs 959, 3659, and 755. If you're wondering what that is, just go out to this link right here, 
and this is all in the header files by the way this is FTP data socket h and it's every header file has a link to it but and that'll go over the RFCs um, in detail actually Wikipedia is probably a better one and what this thing does is it is an FTP server it has a full list of commands here you can see those are the commands so you can upload files download files all sorts of stuff it even has the newer MLSD and ML list um, the problem with FTP is the normal list command if you're familiar with this protocol it just throws it out there in whatever the default operating system is so if you want a list of you know of a directory well it's up to the FTP client to figure out what in the world you are so there's a different list for Linux a different list for Unix a different list for BSD a different list for Mac a different list for Windows as you can imagine FTP client authors go just insane trying to decode what in the world the server just sent them so there was an RFC 3695 which you see how it says not complete because I did not implement the entire RFC just these commands um, MLSD lists a directory in standard format MLST lists a single entity and let's kind of dive into this code a little bit I mean this is a pretty hefty program it took me about a week and a half that's why I haven't done any tutorials because I've been just chugging away on this FTP server um, there's app settings which this just simply um, inherits queue settings and you know does some simple stuff so you can save settings pretty easily um, FTP is comprised of what's called a data socket and a file socket let me explain that a little bit better FTP has two sockets a data socket which you connect on port 21 and then whenever you drag down a file or a directly listing that goes over what's called a file socket so you're creating a different socket and it has two modes port and passive port means that the server will connect back to you passive means you will connect back to the server gets kinda complex I know this was developed back in the pre dawn of the internet I mean literally every web server in the world is running FTP so if you don't know what FTP is please go buy a book now um in here a little bit you can see how I've got all these commands and I've tried to make it simple and there's just an ungodly amount of stuff in here I mean it's just let's see if we can uh, wrong file derp FTP data socket here we go I didn't like that there we go I mean the list just goes right off the screen of all the all the functions that I had to implement here and I tried to implement um, a pretty hefty amount and then the file socket of course is what we use to transfer the data and FTP list item this is how we get a a list of information now what do I mean a list of information what this does is it actually emulates a Unix server so this will return back a directory listing in Unix format so when the client says list it just spits it out in this format and then the MLS item that's the new standardized format very simple easy to understand here and then of course we've got the FTP plugin because I want this as an actual plugin FTP port this takes a little bit of explaining the um, port command or the passive command sends a funky list of numbers and let me actually pull up a website here let me pause video real quick okay the FTP port command um, go to security pros and you can kinda just google it but basically it shows you a very simple dump of what's going on I don't know if the video is picking this up very well but the port command will include an IP address and some really freaky numbers behind it and what's going on here is they're actually putting the port in decimal hex format yes that's a mouthful basically they're converting it from decimal into hex, splitting it into two bytes, a high bit and a low bit, or I'm sorry, a high byte and a low byte, and then compacting those into some funky string. And then you have to merge them back together and convert it into a decimal to get the actual port number. That was not fun to implement, boys and girls, let me tell you. Let's go into FTP port and get a kind of clear view of what's going on here. You can see, uh, this is what it'll return is like there's your IP address and then there is the actual port number notice how it's two different numbers we have to convert those and you see I've got all the converting going on here and then like from string we can actually
pull it in and then pick it apart and convert everything and you see I'm doing like some hex converting and then set num and you know playing around with the bits that took a while to figure out because I'm not a C++ pro as many of you would love to believe actually no I've only been writing in C++ for about a year now um, then we've got the FTP server itself which just very simply starts and stops and then main.cpp um, this is going to be in the FTP tester program I'm going to put on my website and the bulk of main we should go over this um, I'm just setting the organization name and domain you'd want to do this for your own program set your own domain and stuff like that but then we're setting some some variables here we're setting anonymous true meaning I'm allowing anonymous access username a password that's gonna be hashed an IP address you have to have your servers IP address this is one thing I hate about FTP is you have to set the IP address because you don't know your IP address of your external interface if you're sitting internally on the network let me repeat that if you're sitting in your network and you're behind a NAT based router once your traffic goes out beyond that router your IP address changes so if you send them you know 10.10.0.0.1 once it hits that router they're not going to be able to access 10.10.0.0.1 because they're not on your local network so you'll need your external IP address and that's not actually my external IP address um, I was actually running a test using a virtual server just to make sure this worked all right, then we set our root path, and in my case, I'm just using my E drive test folder. And this all gets shoved off into a settings file. Let me see if I can find it here. Da, 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 da. There we go. So you can see how um, this is what the settings file looks like. It'll have your username, your password, which is encoded. That is actually a uh, hash value, base64 encoded and then our root path, our IP address, and we've got anonymous true. You always want to make sure you're never storing your passwords in plain text because it's very easy to just open Notepad or Kate or whatever operating system text editor and just go in there and start messing around with it. You'd be surprised how many times I've gone in and done some kind of investigation and found just plain text passwords all over the hard drives. Alright, well, without further ado, let's fire this thing up and see what it can do here. Show sidebar. So. I'm going to actually set active project on FTP tester, run this, and you see how it says FTP server listening. Now I'm going to pull up Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. This is just Oracle VirtualBox, very simple virtualization tool. Um, I've created a virtual server, so let's just fire this thing up here. And I know I'm going to get some, some boos here from some Linux gurus, but yes, for testing I'm simply using Windows Server 2003. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I had a spare license and it's fairly quick to set up with no real jarring issues. So I've got this on a bridge connection, meaning it's sharing my network card. Let me log in here. And the reason why I'm using a virtual machine is because I wanted to download some popular shareware applications like Bulletproof, Voyager, Qt just to kind of show you this. Um, I tested this across a lot of different FTP clients. Some of them behave better than others. Let me move that out of the way here. So like, let's load up Bulletproof. And you can see I've already been playing around and testing a little bit. And you can see we, we got in there. Current folder AAA. Let's go up one level. And so there is my root right here. Let me pull this over a little bit more so you can see and you can see over in our FTP server we're actually getting the commands and you can see like CD up blank, could not go to parent, print working directory current directory's root, etc etc so one thing I found is that um, not only is FTP kind of a complex protocol in itself but FTP clients are not all the same um, bulletproof wasn't bad it was kind of a pain in the butt to work with to be honest with you um, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, the absolute worst one, which was ironically the one I use, was Coffee Cup. Coffee Cup, actually, let me see if I can fit it all in the little record window here. Coffee Cup, as you can see, I mean, it displays things. I mean, there's my, my drive, and you can see I'm actually doing things here. But you notice every single time it, you issue a command, it says quit. 221 service closing but in coffee cup it says it's still connected 
it's not actually connected. It connects and disconnects, connects and disconnects. And it had, you know, and I honestly, I like coffee cup software. I sold my last company to coffee cup, but I was really kind of surprised when I started digging into this client about how it was acting. It was just doing some really funky stuff that made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Um, but anyways, you know, to each their own, it's still a good program. I still use coffee cup just because, well, it's free. But I mean, when you hit disconnect, nothing happens because you are already disconnected. And then uh, Qt FTP, there's a good one. Um, yeah, let's close that. Continue, close. And uh oh, uh oh, there's my cat. She can hear me. You can see server type. She's port. Um, Qt FTP for some reason when I go to use passive will crash the program. I haven't quite figured out what's going on, but I set it to port and then of course it just works. There's my directory listing. There's my stuff. So I'm like let's just transfer a file here. Let's just take this guy upload. And you can see how uploading because I'm on a virtual server uploading goes rather slow for some reason, but downloading goes a lot faster. And then you can see how our server is just chugging away here. And you see how it's it's actually doing multiple threads. And the irony, of course, is that I didn't implement threads at all. This is just cute signal slots. So it's actually asynchronous by nature just because we're using signals and slots in Qt. Let me kill this thing. Remove all. Yes, I'm sure. And you can see how it disconnects everything once we did that. And I've got I should I should mention if you're working with this, there's a lot of debug info I'm spitting out here just because I wanted to see what was going on. You'll see like Q abstract socket connected state unknown error. Well, if it's in a connected state, you really don't have to worry about the error string. Um, I was trying to figure out why uh, Qt FTP's passive mode was crashing this, but I just I haven't really gotten to that yet. And then FTP Voyager actually surprised me. Um, I didn't have very high hopes for this application, um, especially because I don't like things that just nag the heck out of you. I used to do this, where you just do nag screens, hey, buy me, buy me, and nobody bought it. I mean, it was just ridiculous. So, but uh, let's close this. Close. Close. I mean, you got all these nag screens, and it just gets ridiculous. Close, close. All right, here we go. But uh, Voyager FTP, let me get this in the actual record window here, was surprising. Um, it was surprising just because it's so well behaved from a client standpoint. Um, it's got a good list of features. No, I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm just telling you my honest opinion. Um, you can tell it to do things like use simple directory listings. Um, you can tell it to use passive mode. You can tell it to use the new standardized MLSD slash MLST. And actually, let me pause this real quick. Actually, if it wasn't for RhinoSoft, the people that made FTP Voyager, I probably never would have implemented MLST and MLSD, the standardized formatting, because out on their website, they have a very nice, including right down to the protocol level, what's going on and how it works. And in about 20 minutes, just from reading their little document, I was able to implement this in code. It was just very simple, very straightforward. So not only do I happen to like their FTP client, I really love their online documentation. It was just awesome. So if you guys are watching, hats off. Um, but anyways, you can implement passive mode, the, the new formats, etc., etc. And then, of course, connect. Let's just connect to this guy. And you can see there is our... Let me fit it in the record window here. There is our FTP server right here in all its glory. And you can see we've got our downloads and stuff like that. So let's just... Uh, upload coffee cup and while we're at it let's just download this guy and you see how it does multiple at the same time here now if you notice that one's going faster than the other it's strictly due to file size but it is I assure you running asynchronously on the server so you can have multiple going at the same time and of course it is not bottlenecking our server whatsoever and I don't have like a massive server sitting here this is just my normal desktop 
but the full source code will be out on my website um, let me actually pull up my website here it will be out on my website voidrealms.com under uh, source almost click downloads there geez source and I'll have to put wow I thought I had a cute category out here oh I do it's under C++ derp there isn't much out there right now because I've been busy with other things but you can click C++ just to filter it out and I'll put them under here under uh, telnet server FTP server and uh, probably plug server plug-in server whatever it is um, once again, this comes as is with zero warranty of any kind, so please do not flood me with a million questions like I can't get Qt FTP passive mode to work, please help, or what's my IP address, or things like that. Um, I encourage you to read the comments in the source code. I try to document as I coded, but uh, bear in mind there are bugs with everything else. This is version 1, and it's severely untested. I'm just kind of playing around in my own little lab and making it for some side projects that I got. Anyways, this is Brian. Um, I welcome your questions, comments, and feedbacks, and stay tuned for more tutorials.